one of our uh, senior instructors in big data and data engineering. And we're here to talk with you this evening about the University of California, Irvine Data Engineering Boot Camp program that Simply Learn delivers for the university. And it's a intensive online program that will get you into data engineering fairly quickly. So we'll talk about data engineering as a career field. We'll also talk about what this program offers you, how the program gets you job ready, the curriculum and um, the learning management system. We'll talk about enrollment steps and then we'll take your questions. Please put those into the, the, the chat or preferably the Q&A function in WebEx. That way we'll be able to uh, keep track of those. And we'll take those during the Q&A toward the end of this session. Um, so to introduce Greg, um, he is a noted expert in big data, uh, data science, AI, cloud computing, 30 odd years in the business, if I have that correct, Greg. Yeah, yeah um, I thought you'd update that. N nobody knows what NetWare even is anymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. Um, so he brings to uh, his instruction not only technical knowledge, but a vast background in industry experience and how things work in the real world. That's one of the great things about um, the programs that Simply Learn uh, offers in conjunction with uh, UCI is that we bring um, both UCI instructors as well as industry professionals to teach these courses. So we'll talk a little bit about the, the area of big data and data engineering. Um, we, we live in a world that's basically drowning us in data. It's, it's gotten more intensive the last couple of years during the pandemic because companies that thought of themselves as brick and mortar institutions have had to move to non-contact for a period of time. They've all moved to remote work for a period of time. Um, it, all of these types of interactions that we used to do face-to-face -face became digital. And when they became digital, they became data sources. Every touch point, a source of more data about um, the behavior of customers, suppliers, um, systems in the real world, Internet of Things. and so the amount of data that organizations have to deal with in order to do their work, in order to understand where their future is and how to prepare for it, just mushrooming. This is why the term big data came about, and this is why data engineers are so critical to um, organizations today. People who build and maintain the data structures, the architectures for data, um, the systems for ingesting and conditioning the data so that it can be used in large applications, and especially in artificial intelligence, machine learning, advanced analytics. These are all um, very important areas that can't exist without data engineers. Ever done a, a simple thing like? taking information about a meeting and its participants and trying to put that into an, an Excel spreadsheet in a way where all the data is uniformly coded. Um, and that can take you anywhere from half an hour to many hours, depending on the, the number of lines in that spreadsheet. And that's a manual data engineering process in a very small database. But when you start talking about the types of uh, commercial and industrial scale systems that the world depends on now, it has to be an automated process and it has to, to be done with a solid engineering foundation. So um, Greg, what are we what are you seeing out in the in the world as far as trends and in, in data engineers and big data? Yeah, uh, and some of you guys can maybe start taking little notes about things that we say that are interesting to you, uh, because really big data started off as being a fairly big thing when they invented it, you know, several years ago, um, and then it evolved into something 
uh, quite uh, difficult for businesses to get their hands wrapped around, but they knew they needed to do it. And and now it's become it's become more mainstream. There's a lot more places that you can exercise your skills in understanding data engineering, understanding how to manipulate uh, data. So there's uh, a lot of corollary skills which you'll want to pick up along the way. Uh, make sure you know how to use some of the major databases out there, like NoSQL SQL Server and stuff like that. But also be aware that the whole methodology huge big data sets and making them available to members of either your company or your customers, a lot of those things are evolving quite rapidly to make it simpler, to, to, to increase the level of abstraction between you, the developer, or you, the analyst, and the end user. So there's a lot. Exciting thing is there's a lot going on. That's the exciting thing. It's kind of figuring out where do I start and where do I want to end up? That's, that's, that's kind of where, the, where you're going to want to kind of focus a little bit. Yeah, I mean, to that point, from a, a, a good foundation, you can go in a number of different directions in this field. And these job roles emphasize data engineering, but um, you can also move peripherally into other data-related roles, AI roles, that type of thing. So um, there's a number of different paths that you can take uh, in your career when you, as, as Greg just said, when you yeah. look at where you want to start and where you want to end up. Yeah, I would say the biggest one you got there is probably data engineer, the the which basically means you understand a lot about various types of data, how to normalize it, how to load it, how to cleanse it, things like that. Then the rest of those jobs are typically going to be a little bit more specialized when you figure out what you're good at, what your company needs. So the, the the big mountain to get around is large amounts of data. Unfortunately, this course has got several examples of acquiring and pulling in data and starting to do basic manipulation on them. So those are some of the yeah. And then cloud it doesn't say cloud up there, but cloud is also pretty hot in this field. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and as I mentioned, um, you have to have the foundation, so you've got to understand real time processing, pipelining. Um, how to duck, transform the data into uh, structured and unstructured databases, uh, data lakes, data warehouses, um, how to protect it, uh, maybe to encrypt it, um, the tools you're going to need for analyzing it and visualizing it so that you understand how it's going to be used by the end users or the people who take that data from you and run it through their, their systems to provide actual intelligence and um, actionable insights to executives. Um, and data governance and compliance control, extremely important. And that's an area that, that you emphasize a lot, Greg. Absolutely. So yeah, the gov governance, I'm glad you mentioned that. Governance is uh, honestly, I mean, from my view, it's boring, but but I will tell you what, it's so important. So when you find things that are quote unquote boring, sometimes those are the ones to dig into because that's, you know, the management folks, they like people who are all about making sure that the, the data is being massaged properly, it's being tracked properly, all the government requirements are being executed properly. The, the world of data is, is really huge and big data is honestly a small piece of data engineering. So they kind of keep that in mind too. It's, there's a lot to it, but it's also a small piece of the overall data environment. So um, lots of opportunity is the good thing. That's the important thing. Yeah, and, and it's kind of a testament to how, how life has changed over the last decade or so um, to think that uh, what we used to think of as private information about ourselves was what our social security numbers were, what's on our birth certificate. And now um, there's so many more different types of things that we declare as personal data and we would not want shared with any. Uh, yeah, our P PII is the real common term for that. Personal yeah, exactly. information. Yeah, PII. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, uh, we didn't it. mention, we didn't mention, but data security. I didn't say it specifically that it wasn't in that right. job list. But data security for a lot of businesses is the top tier. So yeah. once you really understand data, you want to make sure you understand how you're securing it, 
preventing others from getting access to it. So we have a question for you in the audience. I'm going to uh, bring this up for you in the WebEx tool. If you happen to be watching on a streaming service, uh, you can put your answers into the comments. But uh, if you're on WebEx, you can answer this directly in the widget that's just popped up on your screen. And we'll give you just about uh, 30 seconds to deal with that. Um, but basically, you know, what has prevented you from enrolling in a program like this or, or moving into this area to date? If you haven't done that yet, why not? Um, and we're, we're curious to know. So we'll give you another about 15 seconds to go. We'll close the poll in three, two, one. Here is the result. So the most common answer, uh, three fifths of the audience say that, you know, you don't, you haven't found a program that feel comfortable or confident at the end of it saying, yes, I can show you that I have done this type of work. I am qualified as a data engineer because here's the work I've done. Uh, it gives you something that gives you a practical experience to, to say that with confidence. Um, and the other two major reasons you can see are not finding a comprehensive curriculum that, that covers all of those skills that we talked about, but also uh, having difficulty to fit this into your, your work schedule. So what we'll talk about now is this particular program, which is the Data Engineering Boot Camp, um, it is offered by University of California, Irvine, their Division of Continuing Education, and um, it's delivered by Simply Learn, a completely online program. And it has a comprehensive curriculum that UCI has worked with industry um, for what they need and aligning it to types of people that they want delivered out of their training programs. Uh, integrated case studies, hands-on projects, things that give you that practical experience using the tools and the platforms uh, that you would be using in your actual work as a data engineer. And combined with online virtual classrooms where you interact live with your instructors every week, um, get their instructional material, but you also get to ask them the questions that keep you on track in your course. Uh, you get to interact with your peers through the platform. And between live classes, you have 24-7 access to the learning platform that allows you to get to um, any work that you need to do, but also ask questions from support staff, uh, put questions out on the your community board and that type of thing. And it's about a six uh, month program. We say that it's uh, about 10 hours a week outside of the classroom hour requirement. Yeah, so it is some a commitment of time and effort, but it's something that will get you to uh, some great results. So you earn a certificate from the University of California, uh, UC Irvine, that attests to your completion of the, the material that you successfully mastered the material in all the courses in the curriculum. Um, you'll also, along the way, pick up a, a IBM issued certificate or two from some of the classes that they offer. And you'll get multiple projects that give you the hands on experience, including a final project, the Capstone project, which allows you to, to demonstrate that you've mastered all of the skills in the program. It pulls together by giving you an industry-based challenge problem to solve. It pulls together all of the different tools and techniques and skills that you've learned so that you can demonstrate those in that capstone project. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, you get master classes from uh, UCI instructors and from IBM industry instructors. Um, if you are in a field that requires continuing educa uh, education units, if your employer or your licensing body requires it, uh, you can earn up to 15 CEUs through this program. 
And we'll also offer you uh, career assistance for those of you who are looking not just to apply this in your current job, but to, to use this as a springboard to bigger and better things in your career. So let's talk a little bit about the University of California, Irvine. It is uh, one of the newer campuses in the UC system. The UC system being, um, most of you should know, the uh, flagship public education institution uh, in the United States, um, one of the top public education institutions in the world, and UC Irvine is a top campus in the system, especially for technology, especially emphasizes uh, applied technologies, and it's generated Nobel Prize winners, um, not as many as my alma mater, UC Berkeley, but uh, <laughs> I had to I had to throw that in there, but yeah, uh, yeah. but um, definitely a, a fine institution that is well uh, recognized worldwide. So the, the certificate you earn from UC Irvine, having that on your curriculum, your TV, or your your resume, is going to be something that will help you get placed. Um, IBM also participates directly in this program. They offer not only the course in big data for data engineering, but they also offer hackathons, ask me anything sessions. You can um, interact with the, their staff members. You can see master classes, which are taught by IBM industry experts. So all of that is an additional value and makes sure that this program is aligned to uh, industry best practices and what industry requires. And that's a really uh, valuable aspect of this kind of program. The last thing I'll mention about the benefits of the program is the Simply Learn Career Assist Service. So for U.S. learners, this is a U.S.-oriented uh, program. We have other programs uh, oriented towards learners all around the world in all different countries, but this uh, UCI boot camp is specifically for U.S. learners, and it includes several things that will help you develop your career. We'll talk about expert webinars and career events. We'll talk about the projects that build up your portfolio that you can demonstrate your experience and skills. But we'll start off by talking about job assist services that we offer in conjunction with Talent Inc. And Talent Inc. offers our, the program participants several aspects. This goes through your first six months as you're taking the program. It continues for six months afterwards. Uh, you not only get access to a job portal, a specific uh, job board oriented towards people taking this course, um, you also get two other very important services. One is resume review, rewrite service, uh, being able to, to revamp your resume so that it uh, not only looks good when it gets to a person's desk, but it survives the process that acts as the gatekeeper between you and that person, namely the automated AI processes that pre-screen resumes. Every company uses them. Resumes get pre-screened through AI algorithms, um, understanding how to structure your resume and what content needs to be there in order to pass that screening is a vital skill help you with that. And then we also make sure that the resume looks good when it does get through that process and goes to human beings who will look at it and evaluate you and ask you in for interviews. Interview process, uh, extremely important because as anyone who's ever had a job knows, you have to go through multiple layers of interview technology. Um, the first layers being evaluation of your skills your hard skills in technology, and then use for your soft skills or team player qualities um, and your fit with management and culture. All of those things we help you with because uh, you get one-on-one -on -one interviewing practice sessions. Um, you 
get career coaching sessions, and get uh, the opportunity to improve and show your best foot forward in personal interactions you're going to have. So these aspects of the program also are extremely valuable. Um, whether you're going to switch employers or whether you're going to try to move up current employer, you are going to have to go through that interviewing process. So that's a really important thing. Uh, Stephanie Learn itself conducts a number of ongoing webinars in technology, in career management. Um, these are all things that are uh, available to you for free. Um, run webinars multiple times a week on various topics. Some of them are like this one, which is a description of one of our programs. But many of them are, as you see here, uh, trends in the industry in particular areas, uh, how to manage your career, how to get the most out of a job search, those types of things. So uh, these are all things that are extremely useful to you in ongoing education and career development. Then we talk about the industry-aligned projects. So here's a, a sampling of some of the projects that you would encounter in the UCI Data Engineering Bootcamp. Um, social media, able to create the system for ongoing monitoring of sentiment on a social media platform like Meta or Facebook. Uh, online streaming management, employment services, all of these, as you can see, are oriented towards real-world problems in industry, case study-type problems, where you'd be offered the challenge and you'll be shown how to apply the tech, tools and techniques, build your own solution for each of these. So that description of what you get out of the project or the program uh, what you need to get into the program, uh, you do need a bachelor's degree in a relevant discipline, so it should be in a technology discipline, computer science, engineering, that type of thing, uh, with a GPA of 2.0 or above. Uh, you do need to have some basic understanding of object-oriented programming. You don't have to be a programmer, but you do have to understand some of the principles. And we don't require, but we recommend that you have two or more years of work experience, not necessarily in the data engineering field, but just two or more years of work experience so that you understand what are the requirements of an employee in an organization. Um, so with that, I'm going to ask you one more question, which is, how much, of ex uh, how much experience do you have in the workplace? Got a gauge for who's in the audience tonight. Oops. Let me open the question here. I'll give you just about 20 seconds for that. I always find it interesting to watch. So I get to see in real time the answers coming in so, as the bars shift. And here is the result. So we have a relatively even distribution. But the interesting thing is about a third of folks have less than two years of experience, fairly new in the, in the workplace. but Another third have more than 10 years. I presume you are folks who are looking at possibly pivoting from the area you're in into data engineering. So we'll talk about how this applies to both groups. And so this is the point of the program where I'm going to stop sharing the slides and allow Greg to take over the screen. And he'll talk about these various things, actual learning environment itself. Here okay. Now, I don't have a screen to show, right? Okay, so I'll let you talk verbally. If you, uh, if you would like me to put the slide back up, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, leave that slide up so I'm, while I'm chatting. So that will just hit the major topics. Okay. Uh, based on what, what, yeah, what 
what Stuart said was that a couple of things are actually very, very important. The, uh, the, the skill set that you guys have, the third lesson two, the third over 10, uh, maybe in the Q&A section, maybe put in maybe what some of your goals are. That would be helpful for us to see that because obviously someone that's only got less than two years is going to have a different goal than someone has been doing this for 10 years. And um, I would imagine different skill. And the same thing for the guys in the middle. There are two to five and six to 10. Don't want to leave you guys out either. So one of the things that we're going to, to be able to do with you on a regular basis is let you see the curriculum from end to end right off the bat. So the first thing you'll see in the big data program is you'll see the entire curriculum, all the, to all the topics, uh, which things are going to be live, what, where the labs fall. Uh, you can ask questions about how we're going to do the labs, what's expected of us, that sort of thing. That's your curriculum. Uh, the other thing for the classes that I teach, I usually, usually early in the program, I will share ancillary pieces that I know are directly related to that particular topic. So that if you happen to have some extra downtime and you want to continue moving forward, you can focus on specific things that you might want to emphasize about yourself. So your your curriculum starts off with the course itself, the course materials. Uh, the the live virtual classroom that's being referred to here is is basically where you've got content, educational content online that you can look at both in the class and when the class is not running. So it's available anytime. And then the other piece of that is the, the labs. Now the labs are interesting because the labs are aimed at the particular course, but I can tell you like in the big data core program specifically, there's some other skills that are super important to really have a base understanding of like programming, for example. If you're not a programmer and you're in a big data course, you're gonna to wanna to know a little bit about basic programming skills, probably Python. Python is one of the most common languages in the big data world that will take you uh, through quite a few different exercises without learning yet another language. There's quite a few languages, so you want to get your hands around at least one that you can get a lot of support from, lots of groups, lots of community support. So that would be one thing. Uh, the other area you see on that list there is uh, there's interactive tests. The instructor normally gives those. So the, the tests are part of the curriculum and you come up to the end of the course and you get to go through the testing and then you, you, you bring your answer and then you can discuss any, any topic or related topic that is that might be of concern to you. The, uh, the, the big thing to do is some of the stuff that Stuart was asking you for here and I've asked you for is kind of what your goals are because uh, what normally happens when I'm teaching, I find there's a lot of commonality with the with the, the people and the, there's also a lot of oh do i have the right experience i'm gonna i want to add something regarding experience real quickly here um you take your, your experience can come from many different places when i used to do live seminars to help people get indoctrinated into a technology-based career we would go through and find out what what have you done before have you done marketing before have you done sales have you been have you done training have you done mentoring what have you done in the past that could be reapplied to this career field? And of course, there's almost almost anything you've done prior, except maybe waiting tables, um, can can be reapplied in a lot of cases to a job that you're seeking. So I always encourage people to don't poo-poo anything you've done as not being relevant or not being right. Make a list of what those things are and see which things you can use to bend to your your new career field. So. And that would lead us, let me go to the next piece there, the capstone project. So when you get to a project, the other thing that you wanna be reasonably aware of is how does a project work? So if you have never done or managed a project before, there's plenty of really cool tools out on the web, not typically part of a course like this one, but I always suggest to the folks that are taking one of my classes that here's some free project management tools that will help you map out what you're doing, when you need to get things done, and that skill in and of itself is enough to get you a pretty good position at, at a lot of companies if you've got the other relevant technical skills. Because a lot of times they need people who can take a complex situation, break it down, put parameters around it, activities to do, and then make it all happen. It's called project management, program management, business analyst. There's lots of different titles. And the skill set varies across the board. That's kind of why you want to know about these things because you might not get the first job as you're going through all these different environments that, that you really want. You might have to do a couple of stepping stones to get there. 
And uh, be, understanding the whole nature of, of defining and executing a project is important for almost anybody. So that would be something to do during that capstone project. And then once you've got your projects running, then you're going to be able to unlock certificates and get some additional support tools. But you all have been around long enough to know that the internet has got a wealth of information on it. So as you're going through the program and going through the course and you realize, oh, we're not going to go to advanced Python. No, not in the big data course, we're not. But can you go in advanced Python? Yes, you can. And if you've got an aptitude for something, that's the other thing to mark down for yourself, by the way. Whatever you guys think you have an aptitude for, bullet that out somewhere and maybe focus on that first because that'll be easier for you because you've got an aptitude for it already. So as you go through this course, as you're going through materials, listening to your instructor, kind of keep some of these things in mind because at the end of the day, the whole the whole ability to act, to move yourself forward rests like firmly on your shoulders. Nobody can open up your brain and do like one of those matrix things and plug in and you're jacked in and now you know Kung Fu. Not happening. So anyway, I'll throw it back to you, Stuart. Thank you. Appreciate that, Greg. And you know, yeah. Greg talked about the, the, the system tracks your, your curriculum and tracks your progress through the curriculum. Greg correctly pointed out, you've got to be responsible for uh, your progress. Uh, the system will give you some ticklers and reminders, show you your calendar of upcoming classes and that type of thing. But it's up to you to uh, put in the effort to show up to the classes, put in the work between classes, that type of thing. So um, we we mentioned that because this is very rigorous and intensive program. Six months is not a lot of time to learn all of these things, take all of these core classes. You start off with the orientation, which is very straightforward, just gives you an idea of what the learning management system looks like and what is expected of you. Um, then you move into the Big Data Hadoop and Spark um, basic information. Then you go into cloud, AWS, um, and how to manage big data on AWS. Um, we move you also to Azure, so you can see the second of the major cloud platforms and data engineering on Azure. And that moves you to the data engineering capstone project. So along the way, you're going to pick up all of the various aspects and skills that we have described. You also have the ability to take electives, which are included in the price of the boot camp, um, which you can take based on your availability, your interest, and your level of uh, commitment. Take big data for data engineering. That's that IBM course. You can take the academic master classes by UCI and the industry master classes from IBM. And then you can also learn about Google Cloud Platform fundamentals so that uh, you add that third platform to the to the mix. Uh, with that kind of foundation of AWS, Azure, and UCP, then you probably be able to um, adapt your skills into any type of cloud platform that you might encounter, but there really aren't that many others. So. Um, you will use uh, a number of different tools. Uh, and the thing about that is this isn't just a matter of you'll be able to put these on your resume as buzzwords. You'll be able to put them on your resume as I have done projects with each of these tools, and so I know how to use them, and I can show you fact examples of how I have used them. So this is a, a really great way build up your muscles in this area. Um, and as, as it notes at the bottom, there's a number of other tools and platforms, um, frameworks that you're going to, to be learning. So uh, we're very proud that we can give you this kind of a, a foundation. And when you take that foundation, you take a challenge project, and you do your capstone project. Um, based on that challenge problem. This will occupy the last several weeks of your of your six month course. This will all involve you working under the mentorship of an instructor like Greg, who will meet with you weekly to help you 
stay on course, not get stuck down dead ends or, or blocks, but um, continue to work on solving that uh, challenge problem, industry aligned, real world type problem, and build your solution to it. So uh, your successful completion of the capstone project is the, basically the final exam of the course shows that you have successfully completed the curriculum, mastered the skills, and it's something that goes into your uh, Git portfolio so that you're able to then share that um, as an example to demonstrate what you have done. So this is, uh, put a lot of emphasis on this because it is very important. Um, so Julie Pai is the special assistant director of the technology programs in the continuing education division at the Irvine and she uh, helps design the curriculum and how it's delivered so she's the overall director and mentor for the, the program makes sure that this is a program that University of California um, stands behind puts its resources behind and is proud of uh, just a little bit of a note about who are the ideal, ideal candidates to go into this program or, or want to go into this program. Uh, IT professionals, beginners in data science, uh, data science professionals who want to move into their skill set, people in other fields who want to pivot into big data, people with programming skills, people with um, business intelligence and analytics skills. So it's basically anybody who counters or uses data or wants to be able to use data to solve problems, this is a good foundational course for you. So with all of that said, given you a fairly good overview of the program, I just want to take a quick monitor of who might be interested in this program. I'll just give you another like 15, 20 seconds for that. Okay. And just a few more seconds. We'll close the poll. Okay. And the poll result. So about 80% of the folks who responded said that they're interested in enrolling in the program, which is great. What we'll do now is share with you how to do that. So it's very straightforward. You'll want to con contact us through the email at askusatsimplylearn.net. And that um, will put you in touch with our learning counselors and admissions counselors who will help you. I'm going to put into the uh, chat right now both that email address as well as the URL of the program page so that you can see more information about the program itself. So that's in the chat for you. And so once you submit the application, We'll review your qualifications, make sure that they meet the prerequisite requirements. Um, may do an evaluation test to show to see how you will do on object oriented programming concepts. And you'll get an admission offer by email. Um, the fees for this program, flat US eight thousand um, dollars, can be financed at seven hundred and four dollars a month through financing. And you'll want to contact us, ask us at simplylearn.net to find out when the next cohort starts. It'll be starting within the next month or two. Um, so with that said, I think we can move on to questions and answers. So I'm gonna stop sharing the screen so we don't stare at this slide the whole time. Wanna bring up 
couple of questions from the audience so far. Um, and I invite you to, if you're watching, to go in and um, put your questions into the Q&A or the chat right now. But Lamont uh, has a question. Um, so in the event that an employer pays for the boot camp through grant funding, how does the tuition payment get handled? So Lamont, with tuition reimbursement, um, that's a, a policy that your employer will set. So some employers will, in fact, pay the tuition directly, and we can bill to them. Um, some employers require that you pay for the course, and they will reimburse you directly once you complete it successfully. Um, but again, you need to check with your uh, HR and your learning and development department at your employer to determine uh, if they have tuition reimburse, reimbursement and how they administer it. That's that question. Um, which days of the week and what times are live classes held in the Pacific time zone? And in the event the live classes conflict with the work schedule, are the sessions recorded? The material can be reviewed. So yeah, Lamont, for that question, um, Greg, th these are usually morning classes for the people in the Pacific zone, right? Yeah, yeah, the ones that I've been doing have, have usually started at like at 10 o'clock in the morning. Let's wait, 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 I'm on the East Coast. So um, whatever that is on the West Coast, I guess that's pretty yeah. early, right? Yeah, but those these are four-hour classes uh, on yeah. Saturdays and Sundays. Um, because this is a, a UCI boot camp and it's oriented toward the folks who live on, on the West Coast, um, I believe the class times start a little bit later. Saturdays and Sundays and that's 7 a.m. But uh, again, it's usually a morning start. Again, seven, uh, again, Saturday and Sunday. You do have to show up to a certain number of the actual classes uh, throughout the course uh, curriculum in order to meet the um, attendance requirement. But as you asked, yes, the, the classes are recorded. So if there's a, con a conflict on a given weekend, if there's something having to do with work or having to do with your personal life that re requires you not to attend the class that weekend, you will be able to review the recordings before the next class the following weekend. So that's uh, important to know, but um, should go into this with the intention of showing up to you know, the, the bulk of the actual live classes. Um, uh, Here's a good question for you, Greg, because you, you would know this better than I. How Approximately how many students are in each cohort? Um, it kind of, it, yeah, it kind of varies. If there's not enough, then we don't run the class. I'll just be honest with you guys. So the, the probably the smallest class I've had was maybe 12. And then I think the biggest class I've ever had was probably 30, but it was more of a conceptual. There wasn't as much requirement to interact back and forth. It was more of a lecture-based. But I would say between 12 and 20 is probably about average. Yeah. Um, is there any form of sponsorship for Simple Learn for this course? Uh, and so no, no we, we don't offer um, sponsorship, scholarships, bursaries, any of that type of thing. We do offer the uh, no, finan uh, no interest financing. So that's how we try to help people uh, afford the course fit it into their budget. And upon program completion, does the student get a physical certificate from UCI? Is the certificate mailed to the student? The answer to that is yes. Upon request, you will receive a physical certificate. Some people don't need that, don't want that. They simply take the, the digital version and use that image in their LinkedIn profile or have that available, but upon request, you can uh, receive an actual physical suitable for framing certificate from UCI. Um, the because we UCI knows that that's important um, to some to some folks to be able to to show that off uh, both personally in their office or, or home environment, but also to show it off to uh, peers and, and employers who might be interested having that. Um, Lamont asked a great question, and this is a question I have to direct you to the uh, folks at 
ask us at simplylearn.net. Question is, is the program of VA approved boot camp where the GI Bill can be used in post 9-11 VA Bill? Um, so I don't personally know the answer to that. One thing I do know is that as an organization, Simply Learn has worked with Veterans uh, Administration and Veterans and other organizations on skilling programs, but I cannot speak to the specific connection between this program and any VA through funding. Um, and Divine asks if we have a cloud computing course. There are com uh, pl cloud computing courses that we offer. As you as you saw in the uh, curriculum, Divine, much of this course uh, goes into the cloud environment, the cloud platforms, and how to use um, those in processing, setting up the big data environment. Um, another good question. What are the hardware and software requirements for this boot camp? You need a, a laptop or desktop computer with a web browser. Um, that's relatively as far as the requirements go because everything will be done through a, an online um, software as a service uh, learning management system. So you don't have to, in general, have software that runs on your own system or, or have requirements of that nature, uh, you will be able to access much of the self-paced video content on other devices like your phone or tablet, um, but we recommend that you have a desktop or laptop in order to be able to do the actual project work, simply because it's really hard to do that on a tiny screen, with a touch screen, keyboard. Um, do you have any other comments on that, Greg? Um, yeah, I, I would say that realistically, you should probably put into your list of things to get at some point. If you don't already have a laptop, you're probably going to want to get one because a lot of the a lot of the things you're going to want to do will be tools that you're going to want to download and use, try out, become familiar with. If you're in an interview process and you don't know how to use Jupyter Notebook, for example, eh, that's not necessarily going to be good for a big data environment. So you might want to have some ability to do your own. Uh, you, as I said, you can you can go online and use the LMS ones, but realistically, if you're going to really get into it, uh, out in the future, try to get your hands on a PC or a Mac. So, um, but it doesn't have to be a big, powerful gaming machine unless that you just like gaming machines. Just a real basic, even a, you know, even a used one is fine. There's plenty of them out there that are pretty budget oriented, but um, yeah, I would I would not want to go to an interview and not know how to use the basic facility of a laptop the first thing they give you in a new job usually is a new laptop so right. that's that's why you don't have to necessarily buy one because every time i've gone in somewhere to do a project they hand me a laptop like immediately because i'm not allowed to use mine no 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 not the secure corporate environment they'll, yeah. they'll usually give they'll usually give you one yeah. that's one of the funny things about um the pandemic is uh that somebody mentioned uh, early on if they had told you know an executive who said if they had told us that we needed to move everyone to work from home we would have said it will take six months and 10 million dollars of budget and <laughs> when it when it happened it took three days with no budget um, yeah <laughs> but the flip, flip side of that is a lot of people are working on their personal computers yeah. their, their personally owned property um rather than corporate owned systems so um we we envision that that's going to, to swing back to corporate owned because again, as Greg said, uh, especially if you're dealing with sensitive data uh, security. Oh yeah, having that com computer being owned company owned property within the the perimeter of its security yeah, management system is very important. So, uh, I don't see any other questions that have come in. So with that, I'm going to um, move to the last question that I'm going to ask the audience. It's pretty straightforward. So for the folks who have said that they're interested in this program, when would you like to start? And I'll just start this last poll question here. 
and again about 20 seconds i know that's about 15 seconds too long but just want to make sure everybody gets a chance to answer and we'll close the poll in about uh, five seconds more that would be three two so here's the result. We always like to say, if this is something that's going to change your life and, and your career for the better, it's always worth thinking about doing it sooner than later. About half of you agree with that. So um, something that immediately, um, another quarter within three months. And um, again, this program will be available uh, for the foreseeable future. So if do you want to uh, take more time to plan it out? Uh, it'll be available, but again, we'd love to welcome you in to our uh, next upcoming cohort. To find out about that, I would suggest that you, oops, sorry, uh, contact us at ask us at simplylearn.net. Speak to our learning consultant through that and uh, find out uh, specifics about course requirements cohort dates and that type of thing and and we look forward to welcoming you into the uci learning community um, hope to see you there and thank you greg for uh, sharing your knowledge and insights with everyone here tonight yeah no problem thank you for inviting me and um, thank you to everyone who, who joined us this evening um, have a great, rest, uh, a great rest of the evening, and uh, we'll see you soon.